be part of our brand. Leadership for God and Country. Discussing the business of making and spending money. Hello there and welcome to this special program on your leadership on your darling online television leadership. My name is Winnie Fred Ubebo and of course I have a guest in the house today. He is a lecturer with the Federal University of Technology, Mina. He has a PhD in in computer and uh, telecommunication. Uh, telecommunication and computer engineering is also a member of several associations and a consultant with international telecommunication union and his name is dr james agadjo thank you so much and welcome to this program on money radio now as we are going to be talking about ai ai is artificial intelligence the world is agog with artificial intelligence and of course, Nigeria is going to be having its own share with you in the studio today. You are going to be sharing light on uh, what, where are we? Is Nigeria on its way to adopting AI? Let me start with that. Thank you very much. Um, once again, I want to thank you very much for having me You're in your studio. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I bring to you greetings from the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Yes, um, AI is a concept way, way back that... Uh, before now was seen as a uh, fiction, but today, in today's world, it's a reality. AI has a acronym stands stands for artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence is a way of abstracting what humans can do to actually solving various problems. Human, uh, the human being is a system, and the system itself is a uh, a, a, a process, a, pos a procedure, an algorithm that is followed. So if you could follow that algorithm, adapt it, and put it into machines, you could gradually begin to replicate what women can do. We have a nervous system that carries out uh, the function of thinking and solving problems. Uh, in so, AI. Yes. So now, um, let's go to the questions proper. Um, AI. AI has actually come to stay because over time, like we probably had before mm. now, that uh, a necessity is the father of invention. Mm. When things become necessary, then there's nothing you can do that we see inventions coming up. And that is what AI has actually come to do. Now, AI on its own is not out there to probably uh, kind of um, frustrate what humans do. But as far as I'm concerned, is to kind of complement what humans do complement what women do because there are a whole lot of problems, complexities in problems, and our manual approach to solving problems mm -hmm. might not be too applicable again. And that's why the need to shift this paradigm towards adopting AI, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And right here in Nigeria, things are actually happening. Thank you. Okay. Now, with AI coming on stream, many people are afraid of losing their jobs because uh, AI is coming to jobs. Like you said, even AI can't even think uh, with nervous uh, system in place. So we are asking, how true is that? Is people's fears, is it unfounded or they are just uh, baseless uh, or needless fears? Okay, thank you very much. You see, um, let me take this, take us back, because uh, I, want to, I want us to be quite comprehensive and detailed about what we're doing. Mm. Uh, if you follow the revolutions in the world, like the industrial revolutions, yeah. how things are, uh, evolved yeah, from, yeah, from, from time past, yeah, time. long before now, like we actually said, that the aspect of um, slave trade, mm. where everything was based on manual yeah. uh, capacity. So you need human beings to manually drive industries. Mm. But over time, 
things changed, and we had um, the first industrial revolution about um, 1760 that gave room to steam, steam engines, where uh, com combustion mm. of um, engines could lead to could lead to uh, vehicles being driven from one point to the other. Mm -hmm. So by so doing, mm -hmm. it was easy to move goods from one point to the other. Mm -hmm. Thereby, that aspect of using human for manual uh, responsibilities gave way. And as that one went by, year 1840, mm -hmm. the second industrial revolution equally came, and that one had to do with the discovery of electricity. Mm -hmm. The discovery of electricity, some of these uh, manual and mechanical processes gradually started giving way mm -hmm. for some mm -hmm. more enhanced uh, method of solving problems. And thereafter, that one went on for very long. And in the early um, um, 20th century, the, the other aspect of um, computer logic, where you have silicon as um, a major logic component, came mm -hmm. to play. And at this point, you get to see that we are now moving away from the normal uh, electrical. Uh, just pure electrical um, application to a logic device where you could easily carry out simple computation automation and that was actually what gave room to um, computers. Co computers gradually started coming up mm -hmm. and started hearing about silicon chips and so on mm -hmm. and that moved and now we are now in the fourth industrial revolution that came up around the late 60s, 70s, 75 mm -hmm. and we now have um, on cheap computer systems where microchips were developed and had programs in them. And ever since then, the world has not been the same again. So if you follow this trend, you get to see that at every interval, within, within some space of interval, mm. a particular revolution is given birth to. And it's actually sponsored by, on the, on the account of a logic component. So coming here now to the question you asked mm. with regards our fears jobs. of losing jobs are the fears unfounded, are they baseless or groundless, whichever way you want to look at it. Oh, thank you. Um, issues of jobs, I don't quite agree. Jobs are going to be lost and more jobs are going to be created. Like some of the things we are doing today, uh, maybe tomorrow might not be a new, your, your position might be taken over by yeah. AI. But, <laughs> you said yes. that I jumped. <laughs> no, 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 but what is going you to happen? My fear is not based like no, no, but what's going to happen is that mm. there's going to be an overlay. And this overlay is what we call the next level. That is where you're going to move to because machines are taking over yours. So you, you are going to move to the next level where you are going to do the control of these machines. So these machines are not going to be working just 100%. They are not going to be autonomous 100%. They are going to be controlled by the uh, humans, whether you like it or not, because you like, the, the, there must be this, uh, what, what, what do you call it? The, the, there must be this uh, human intervention coming in between. Me, yes. are these humans, if they are going to be worked by humans, are they also going to be trained in that field? Fantastic. And that is what actually brings us to uh, capacity development. There will be need to develop capacity at every point in time to be on with what is trending in our field. Okay. Uh, you, you, like you guys in the media, uh. certainly have some new entrants in terms of this profession. Uh. So there's we need to um, develop capacity beyond where we are, just like we have in uh, other climbs where you get to see human, uh, sorry, AI. AI doctors, uh, AI lawyers, and so on. So there is need to actually develop capacity beyond the norm where we are now. Because if you see the trends, there are th things playing out now. Uh, um, some very, very uh, important trends, like what we call digital twin. A digital twin, which has to do with uh, the augmented reality. Just like you are here, you interview me, uh, or probably you are, I'm, I'm being called upon to be interviewed. And in the course of um, wanting to get to see me physically, I tell mm. you, I'm not, I'm not going to be here. Mm. But I'm going to be here virtually. Mm. I could still be sitting down the way I sat down. Yes, I'm sitting down. Yes, we, have, see, we do have that. So digital, yes. uh, digital we'll augmented reality, hologram. We we'll do that, see, okay. You see, you see okay, this one, you'll be seeing You'll be you. seeing me, just oh, like one with the advert you see. I've seen yes. some demo So demo I'll be there talking to you, mm. but I'm not physically there in person. Mm. So these are some new entrants. We have a generative uh, AI, which is large language uh, models, 
I don't know if you've heard of uh, GBT. Yes. Yes. I've, so, I've, I've uh, Teddy wanting one. to solve your problem and people say yeah. they are even making you lazy. No, it's just taking you to the next level. What you probably do as woman before. I just can't I can't forget the first experience I had when I just typed what I won't say the chat GPT or I give it to I wrote it, I was screaming. <laughs> like, I mean, look at look at. Oh. Uh, no, it's really interesting. Not from what you just said that uh, we don't need to fear fear. I want to find out from you. What are the jobs now that the uh, AI cannot do? Okay. Um you can virtually do everything, but where no, no, area no. where you see I, I think that I, I like I like that question very well. Why? Because uh, the question, the question will go a long way in mm. actually uh, our fears that have been allayed will be kind of handled. Mm. Uh, AI is not supposed or is not meant to work in isolation. Okay. The factors of human must mm. come in. Must come in. Oh. So that these things don't go beyond control. Uh, you're not going to be, uh, invent or evolve something that will uh -huh. begin to act outside um, control. So yes. there's going to be control, control. and bounds for AI. AI, AI based uh, application. Now, for some of the work we do, uh -huh. it's just that AI is going to abstract some part of the work we do uh -huh. and leaving less of it to us. So, uh, like in this studio where we uh -huh. are now, uh -huh. Right as I'm speaking with mm. you. What can okay, like as you are in the studio now, like what angle or what part can they I do? Like my position, you can actually ask questions. Yes. Okay. But somebody's gonna be controlling what um, moderating it. Mod moderating it so that it doesn't go beyond the uh, bounds. Okay. So that, that that is it. So you're doing less of it appears you're doing less of less of um, the work, but actually you 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 making more because AI is actually doing more for you, but the little you are doing that has to do with control, mm. you are actually far beyond them. What okay. you, what you earn. So I want to find out from you what can you say about the impact of uh, artificial intelligence in Nigeria? Okay. Yes. Um. I just came back from, from a world summit called AI for Good, organized by okay. United Nations, uh, the UN, and in the. That's organized by United uh, Nations, being um, ruled out by ITU, that's International Telecommunications mm -hmm. Union, mm -hmm. that I actually... Yes, uh, yes, and it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. And I will not fail to mention and appreciate some person that made it very, very possible, like uh, Dr. Vishnu Ram. Um, we have this uh, chap called uh, Engineer Blessed Guda, uh Nuhu to Kotongura, Frank and uh, the host of, host of others like Otnel Emmanuel. We actually have something we're doing now which I must actually make very clear. Sometimes we go to set up a research team with a group of young smart students. And the name of the setting is Wireless Network and Embedded, Embedded System Technology Research Group. And this group was actually out there to see how they can equally help in advancing the course of AI. And with the help of um, the likes of uh, Dr. Instagram, we able to come up with solutions to problems using AI. So now, within our local environment, we are equally adding value. And it was on the account of that, one of us, myself, was invited to the all important summit that AI for mm -hmm. And what we do now, we solve some of the important. problems that are going to be, be experienced with the emergence of 5G. I hope you understand yes, that 5G is gradually being ruled out. Yes. Uh, with the emergence of 5G. And there will be but it's a bit slow in Nigeria, I don't understand why. Yes, the... yes. Thank you very much. It's, it's another wonderful, the, the wonderful observation you made there. It's slow in Nigeria because um, the percentage penetration of um, uh, this, uh, the understanding of uh, AI in the application of some of the things we do mm -hmm. is actually um, slow. When I mean penetration, penetration, that's having experts mm -hmm. to get to uh, get people to understanding what these applications are all about. So there is need for further engagement mm -hmm. to see how um, experts can collaborate with some of our people, our people at the grassroots to get to benefit and understand the vision of AI. Because AI is actually 
becoming a generic thing, in general for everybody, uh -huh. you now apply it to your specific field mm -hmm. of um, endeavor mm -hmm. to make sure that you get better production, whether in manufacturing, in teaching, and all of that. Okay. Now, we want to share some of your experiences when you went for this international event. We were actually talking about it before we were diverted. Okay. Thank you. Um, AI for Good is uh, a summit uh, organized by the UN. You just came on board because of this uh, AI. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. It was actually organized because the, the essence is one to uh, kind of um, evaluate the extent AI has got into, mm. then two, to equally talk about how to control and regulate the question you asked, to regulate the use of AI. Mm. So that's why they tag the summit AI for mm -hmm. good. So as to making sure that this uh, invention or the, the, new, the, 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 the new stage we are actually entering is properly regulated. So that it will not be hijacked by malicious users, people who want to use them uh -huh. for some negative mm -hmm. yeah, things. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's a report that said uh, 90% of businesses in Nigeria are going to actually adopt AI. Now we want to find out what are the benefits of adoption of AI in Nigeria in the long run. Oh, I like that in, in the long run. Because certainly it's, it's got, got to be in the long run. It's going to be because it's cost intensive. It's cost intensive, so you can't just say uh, a match. Capital intensive. Capital intensive. Mm -hmm. um, in the long run, first and foremost, it is important we adopt AI for whatever we're doing to a good extent. Why? Because we are in the, the reason is because we are in a very competitive world. Mm -hmm. And a day could probably set you right. behind. And right now that we are talking about knowledge-based economy, economy yeah. uh, we don't believe in the old paradigm that has to do with uh, basing your economy with what is under the mm. even under under the earth crust, like uh, mineral resources and so on. No, knowledge-based economy. And that's why you see some of our contemporaries in the West and uh, mm. Far East, Asian tigers. It's about knowledge. What mm. what they sell up because this is a digital mm. world we find ourselves. It's a world of digital transformation mm. uh, where people are actually applying the, the application of uh, AI in whatever they're doing. And when you do that, what it implies is that your production will be enhanced, manufacturing will be enhanced, teaching, learning, monitoring, and even security will be enhanced. And when you do that, you'll be able to measure up among the League of Nations in the world so as to be able to contend with the uh, present day competition mm -hmm. in the world because the global market now actually requires everybody to be up and doing mm -hmm. and if you're not adopting the use of ai to optimize optimize mm -hmm. to better your product then you might be left behind because the manual approach might no longer be um, that applicable mm -hmm. all right thank you so much now what is your advice for government on uh, for government on uh, regulating ai in nigeria if adopted fantastic now, what I personally advise here is that there should be a, a stakeholder holders involvement, a stakeholders uh, meeting that will call, bring together players in this industry. And this will um, enable each and every participant to figure out areas of uh, bounds these things should be that's whatever control and areas of application so has to be able to accommodate every player's interest so at the end of the day we now see what i want to do we now come up with a national um, structure or a, a, a plan on how to achieve some percentage penetration of um, ai so i will now have a kind of mechanism that will that you to talk the other time that um, it's a long term thing to so have all of these things happening in phase. So one phase after the other, you get to see what you know what you are achieving. Because the truth about it is that if you see the area of agriculture, gone are the days when people pick up their hoes and uh, and, and cockatlers and uh, yeah. Yes. When when you go to this um, advanced advanced climate, you know you have smart farms. AI con pest, um, control uh, machines and, and so on. Irrigations 
And so, yeah, yes, yes, so they, they, they are there. So, in, in, terms of, in terms of irrigation, herbicides, and so on. So, the work a thousand persons could do could only be done by one or two, three persons. But that's not to say those thousand persons will not have some other areas of application. All of this will lead to larger productivity. So, this item, so if I have a thousand persons actually producing uh, food for a community, and I have just one person who could do the work of 1,000 person, then there's no way we can compete with such person. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Professor, from your international meets, what are the emerging technologies of AI and what are the disruptive parts? Wonderful. Of course, you know, for every good thing, there must be a disadvantage. Yes, yes. Um, now, let the, us in on the emerging technologies. Now, there's something I must say here. What we saw, mm. and from some of the clips I saw you showing, we have uh, this aspect of what we call digital tool. Mm. Digital tool. Um, right there, you can see one of the most intelligent uh, uh, robots called yes. uh, Sophia. You must have seen her in one of the. Yes, I, videos, person, I, personally, I personally interviewed her. Very intelligent. Ah, you interviewed her? Yes. She yes. answers your questions as if you are just a woman. I think mm. I remember asking her a question and she showed me. Mm. She gave me an answer that really marvel. I was marvel. Mm. When I told her what is the difference between yourself and who woman, she yeah. said she doesn't have a soul. That was the difference. Yeah. She, she answered me. She that. answered me. So, wow. you, you, you understand. So, but um, going by go, 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 going back to your questions mm. you, you asked. Ask what are the emerging technologies? Are the emerging technologies? And of course, now, the disruptive part. Yes, and so the uh, digital twin is actually taking a very uh, big stage in the. Uh, in the, in, the, in the market of uh, AI, digital twin has to do with having to be able to replicate uh, something that is physical and replicate it virtually, like um, what would this thing you call hologram mm, and all, all hologram. of that. Uh -huh. just, just like having you here, yes, but you are not here, you are not here, you are not here, you are not stuff like that. Mm. So it's, it's happening. So it's been developed, but these are researches that have been developed, and um, so many. And so we must have heard of this aspect of augmented reality. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this other one is called virtual reality, mm -hmm. and at the same time, the other one that is actually hybrid for both is actually taking the, the center stage at the moment. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is uh, this one we call generative you know, AI, which we call large language models. Mm -hmm. Large language models, where you actually have some of these things that can help you train some of the things you want to do and optimize and create solutions for your problem. An example of that is the generative model, which is an activity, like you said, Marvel on, on your yes. first experience. Yes, that uh, it. No, I was literally screaming. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So I think another one again is uh, tiny ML. Mm. Tiny ML means uh, tiny machine learning. Uh, some of these big, big uh, applications mm. could be made, could be redistributed, to be very small and um, battery powered, and they could they could develop algorithms mm. that would help uh, these little little uh, devices solve problems within whatever little physical space. So you don't probably need to come and uh, mm. deploy one very big machine. You could probably distribute them into mm. little, little machine time. Then another one is uh, open, open RAN. It is open radio access network, which is totally going to revolutionize our telecommunication mm. space. All of this is will be seamless with the emergence of uh, 5G. And you know, as we're talking about 5G, mm. we're already talking about thinking about 6G. Mm -hmm. So some of these technologies will not be possible to drive with okay. some of the network we have now. Mm. By the time we go to the next one. A typical example, you must have heard of driverless cars. Oh, yes. I don't way back, it was yes. fiction to you. Yes, it's but from okay. fiction now, it's even now, like, it's really fiction until I see it with my own eyes. It's actually been tested on this, it's, it's been tested on in some cities oh. like uh, in Korea, uh, even in uh, 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 Dubai, UAE. It's oh. been tested on some pilot studies actually going on on how cars can uh, drive themselves and. Stuff like that. So, so many technologies. So many technologies. Not that you mentioned there. Is it UAE, Dubai? I've forgotten which of the sheikh was going. We saw him with uh, his own bodyguard. 
AI. Yes. Did you see the video? I think I saw one. Time. Yes, that is, is a bodyguard. security bodyguard. Now, what happens, uh, Trump? What if there's a, a malfunction? That's when you come. How will he know uh, his uh, enemies? How will he know his enemies? That's when you come. Like, you understand? Because we saw the video, we trended for a long time. It's still trending, uh, uh, so to speak. Still, still it was walking behind him, so tall and huge. And we all begin to ask, how will he know the uh, the Sheikh's friends or his enemies? Okay, let me let, let me put this to you. I think mm. Ghana, we are, we are converging to your answer. The one you asked that mm. you tend to taking up our jobs. Yes. Yes, before I come to this one. Um, if AI take our jobs, mm. people will be needed to work, service, and repair these uh, machines mm. okay. when they go down. So be, everybody will now go technical. Based on your specific fields and areas. Okay. So when these machines actually go faulty, what happens? Technicians will go in there to okay. put them. Right, so that means another level of um, job has been created there. Mm. So going back to what you are saying, you see, uh, whatever intelligent application you have, mm. there is a bound. There is a bound, mm. a boundary because these things are run based on procedures. That's an algorithm called algorithm. Okay. That's an algorithm that. Which is more, which is a lot to be. I think we saw that one in mass that time doing our things. Yes, and like algorithms. Like yes, yes, yes. Like same, same, same algorithm. That algorithm then develop them to programs written there. So they have their bounds. So these bounds are is about what and what it ought to do. Outside that, except somebody okay. gets gets okay. gets hold of those scoops okay. and maybe redirect them to do something else. Okay. Uh -huh. it, doesn't, it doesn't go beyond what it is asked to do or what okay. it is trained to learn to do. It can't go beyond that. So for somebody to use uh, to come up with an AI based uh, machine, okay. certainly that machine will be working in its control. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you so much, Professor. Now, time is running out against us, but just before we go, I have one question to, to ask you What is the future of AI in Nigeria? Yes, um, good, 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 good question you just said, posited there yeah? today. Uh, Nigeria as a nation is not smiling in so many directions, yes, in the area of economics, in the area of um of job creation even in academics and so many other ways some of these problems are problems you might not be able to fix for a long time due to the complexities of the process that will be required but with ai ai will come in as a as 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 a as a, as a way of closing those gaps. And these gaps are, first and foremost, in the area of job creation. Gone are the days when we advise students to mm. get, when they get to, when they graduate, come up and wait for uh, job applications, job vacancies on the pages of newspapers. And you probably pick up your pen and start writing, uh, writing application letters. Mm. AI is opening doors for new jobs mm. to be created. People are learning skills in the skill acquisition. With AI? Yes. No, people are learning skills on the base or on the on platform the, of, of AI. Uh, the existence uh, of AI. Yes. They are learning skills. People are developing solutions. Mm. You know, you, you don't longer need physical space mm. uh, to be able to deliver to people. Mm. Um, with the virtual environment. You could be working for me and you can get paid. Mm. All I have is I have a problem and you are providing solution and you, you, you're solving these problems. So AI is one very uh, a big player in that area of job creation because there are so many digit so, so many opportunities. This aspect of digital transformation transformation has opened up in the skies there where you can use AI. Now for instance, uh, there are solutions of uh, problems in various fields. Mm. And you require AI to develop models on mm. how to solve mm. these problems. So if you are 
based on the aspect of AI, because AI, one would tell AI, AI is actually open, it's a case of two extremes, one and mm. two extremes, it's open to various applications. Mm. So based on the field, you find yourself, just that some of you who are in the media, yes. who develop, who, who identify problems in some areas, mm. and these problems ordinarily wouldn't have been easy to solve, but with the uh, adoption of AI, it will be done, it will do be one, one shot uh, solution, provide these solutions, and you become a name that will celebrate it. So it's actually open, opening so many areas. Some of I have a student who is probably in 400 level who is being paid salary at this level um, oh. and getting receiving salaries from different uh, parts of the world. Oh. Yes, my yeah, yeah. of it's, 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 it's actually solving problems to in creating a solution to some of the problems oh. they have because of his, the skills he acquired that is AI uh, applied. All right, thank you so much, Professor. It's been a pleasure to have having you in the program to discuss on the state of AI thank in Nigeria. What well, have you been hearing from Professor James? James Agbaje, uh, lecturer for the University of Technology, Mina. He's also a consultant to International Telecommunication Union. It's been a pleasure having you on the program and so for the enlightenment too that I also gained. Obviously, this is where we end today's program, More New Radio. Don't forget, same time next week is another date. I remain Winifred Webber. See you then. Bye. Be part of our brand. Wow, it's been interesting, though. Leadership for God and country.